song for a long time. In fact, um, well, we used to do it very often. When we, when we get together to rehearse on Thursday, the singers are the only people on stage who had ever played it before. So um, I think that for some of you, it'll, it'll come back. You'll remember riding this bicycle a little bit. Um, so we're going to have you just join in and, and sing with us. Uh, but let's put our hands together. We're going to wake up a little bit together this morning like this. Huh? There is no life without you You have all that we need Where you are, every fear is broken In the darkness must flee Closer, closer, we want to know you Reaching out, reaching out Here in your presence, we want to go deeper In your light, come alive I sing with me There is no Thank you. 
all that can satisfy. Will you sing it with me, church? To you, we will come running in you. We find belonging in your love is all that can satisfy. Lift your voices. Thank you for singing along with us this morning, church. You can be seated for a minute. Well, good morning, Cape Cod Church. <laughs> it is really good to hear your voices, and I am especially grateful to be here with you this morning. Uh, many of you may have heard this last week, if you subscribe to our email newsletter or you follow us on social media, um, this past week has been a little bit of a whirlwind for our family, for Pastor Ben, and his wife Tammy, and, uh, and their kids, myself among them. A week and a half ago, uh, my mom, Tammy, went to a local doctor in pursuit of just some symptoms she had been having for a CAT scan. And while she was there with my dad, of Pastor Ben, they discovered a sizable mass on her brain. And that led them to Boston immediately, where they went for additional testing to determine uh, what it was, where they found that she had uh, an egg-sized tumor on her brain, which they believe is non-cancerous. And after quite a bit more testing and just trying to figure out next steps, last Tuesday, they determined that she would be having brain surgery on Wednesday. And uh, many of you heard about that at that point, and we have been overwhelmed by uh, your generosity in praying for her through that experience and through her recovery. And last Wednesday, she went into surgery for six hours and had the best outcome that we could have possibly hoped for. The brain surgeon, who we love and is just incredible, um, was incredibly happy with how the surgery went. They were able to remove all of the mass on her brain. And within just a few hours after surgery, she had woken up, she was eating, and she was telling stories already of the surgery experience. <laughs> Two things uh, have just stood out to our family throughout this process. One, we have been overwhelmed by your faithfulness in praying for us and just the outpouring of love and prayer that we have received from all of our friends, and but especially from our Cape Cod Church community. In fact, we heard from people all around the world connected to Cape Cod Church, from missions partners in Kenya to friends in China and Scotland, a previous member of Cape Cod Church in Australia, all around the world, and hundreds of you here just praying for Tammy. And we are so grateful. Last week, we talked about at Cape Cod Church what it looks like to win <laughs> when the outcome is uncertain. And this past week, we got to live that out, and we just want you to know that that for us was a win. 
before we knew what the outcome would be, before we knew how the surgery would end, to see your faithfulness, which is such a testament to your belief that our God is alive and at work, <laughs> and to see your love. And to see you embody his love in our lives for us is such a testament to our God. And that for us was a win before we ever knew how the surgery would end. And my mom walked into that room with a piece we know was because of your prayers. We know it was supernaturally given. So we just wanted to thank you this morning. And the second thing is that we just wanted to celebrate in gratitude because God answered our prayers with a resounding yes. In every way that we could have thought to ask, in things we didn't think to ask, he provided again and again in the last week to 10 days. And we are incredibly grateful. And the process of recovery is not over. Uh, my mom came home yesterday, which we are celebrating and so happy for. She is moving and strong, but the recovery will be long, and it's not over yet. So we would invite your prayers for that continued recovery as she regains her strength. And uh, with that, Pastor Ben has decided to step back from Cape, his responsibilities here on Sundays at Cape Cod Church just to be with her, to support her, and walk through her, this with her. So for the next few weeks, we are going to benefit from the gifts of other pastor friends who are going to be with us speaking, and we're so grateful for that as well. But as she continues through this, we would just invite you to continue praying for her recovery. So this morning, before we continue to worship together, as one family, uh, I just want to take a moment and to pray both to thank God for you and for what he has done and to pray for the road ahead. So would you join me in prayer? Father, we are so grateful for everything that you are and everything that you have done. God, we thank you that you are a God who sees us and knows exactly what we need, who's a father who loves to give good gifts to his children. And Father, this morning, we just thank you for the ways that you have delivered Tammy, my mom. Thank you for protecting her through surgery. Thank you for the peace that you gave her and our family as we walked through uncertainty. God, just thank you for providing and for protecting her life. Thank you for answering our prayers. And Father, I thank you for this family, for Cape Cod Church. Oh, for the beautiful reflection they are of you and your son, Jesus Christ, for their love and their faith. Thank you, Father, for giving us this gift, the church, your family, where we can love one another and support one another through uncertain times. God, we just ask that you would continue to bless Tammy. We thank you for the gifts that she's won to this community for 30 years, for her wisdom, for her quiet grace in leading us, Father, and touching thousands of lives in ways that we will never know. God, we just ask that the recovery ahead would be smooth. And where there are bumps in the road, Father, that you would give her peace and comfort. And Father, you would give us wisdom and eyes to see where we can love one another, serve one another, in the good times, in the uncertain times, and in the bad. Father, we thank you and we praise you for all that you are, for all that you do through your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cape Cod Church, will you stand with me as we continue to worship together? But now they fall 
But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness And I'm still in your hands And this is my confidence You've never failed me yet I know the night won't last And your word will come to pass And my heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me within
Thank you for singing. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. You can be seated. I have some really outstanding news this morning. I'm not preaching. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. You guys were nervous there for just a second when you saw me come out, didn't you? Yeah, I know. I know. I know. But this would have been over in the middle. So, hey, um, as Brittany said, um, uh, Pastor Ben and, uh, is taking uh, a few weeks off to take care of Tammy as, as, he, uh, as he should. Um, hopefully, he is going to actually relax a little bit. But those of you who know him know he won't do that. He'll, he'll continue working hard but while he's taking care of Tammy as well. Uh, but he's going to be out for a couple weeks, and uh, we are so blessed as a congregation uh, to have great, great, great friends around Cape Cod and beyond um, who are willing to step in and help lead us uh, towards the truth, towards wisdom, on, on short notice, very short notice uh, in this case. Um, Pastor Doug Scalisi uh, from Brewster Baptist Church uh, got a phone call um, uh, not too long ago. It was uh, Tammy and Ben, I think, were on the way to the hospital and said, hey, could you? And uh, good friend that he is, he said yes. Uh, many of you know uh, Pastor Doug. Um, he's the uh, co-host with us, uh, co-sponsor of the Thrive Conference that we do every year in March. Um, and uh, a long, long time friend of Cape Cod Church and the Fell Dots. Uh, Pastor Doug and his wife Jill have been serving at the Brewster Baptist Church uh, for over 25 years. And in fact, Jill is preaching there this morning. She jumped in so that he could jump in here. Um, and I understand they've got two boys, Nathan and Greg, and I understand that Nathan is preaching this morning somewhere as well. And uh, Greg, the slacker, is not. But three out of the three out of the four Scalises are uh, are preaching this morning. Um, Pastor Doug is a, uh, as I said, a a good good friend of Cape Cod Church. Even though uh, he did lead the Brewster Baptist softball team in beating the Cape Cod Church red team Friday night. But yeah, it was it was yeah it was cheating. Um, <laughs> but we are we are more than honored. Uh, more than honored to have an old friend of our church, an old friend of the Feldots, and a good, good leader of the church on Cape Cod to join us this morning to bring us uh, the truth and, and some wisdom and, uh, and, and a message. So would you uh, join me in a big Cape Cod church welcome, Pastor Doug Scalisi. <laughs> Thanks so much. That's fine. Well, it is uh, a real privilege for me to be here with all of you at Cape Cod Church and for all of you who are watching online, as I know, like with our church, I'm sure there's plenty of you joining us online, including Ben and Tammy. Ben, don't get too nervous. I won't 
mess things up too much for you. But as Tom alluded to, it's uh, been a blessing for my wife Jill and I to know Ben and Tammy for over a quarter of a century. And uh, we are just so beyond thrilled uh, that God has answered all our prayers uh, beyond our, all that we can ask or imagine, as Paul says in Ephesians, with Tammy already being home. And we just want to continue to lift them up in prayer and that Tammy's healing will be swift and complete. And keep uh, Brittany and Brianna and Brooke and Cody in your prayers as well. And uh, I don't know, most people just can't imagine the impact that a pastor's spouse has. And, you know, the, the, it's really, it's, it's hard to estimate. And, and I know uh, Ben and I both feel incredibly blessed that our wives are, are such wonderful partners in ministry and so supportive. And as Tom said, I appreciate uh, my wife Jill preaching down at BBC this morning. And I am grateful uh, for my relationship with Ben and with Cape Cod Church uh, to be able to collaborate with people like, there's no finer Christian man on the Cape than I know than Tom Maine. What a wonderful, wonderful guy he is. And, uh, and for you all to enjoy this fantastic worship team every week, to have the terrific media team that you have, and I want to express my gratitude to them. They've been so generous in coming to our church and helping our team. Um, and Tom and the Cape Cod Church Red Team, uh, what a fine, fine group of Christian men. And as we always say, you know, that's the game we look forward to the most all year, just because the fellowship, it's the best. No offense to the other Cape Cod team, it will probably do to us what we did to the Red Team on Friday night. Uh, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with Brewster Baptist Church, Brewster Baptist Church is a little different than Cape Cod Church because while both of your services are contemporary, we have a contemporary and a traditional service. And so we sing primarily praise songs at the one and we sing hymns at the other. And while some of us enjoy both types of music, uh, in case this is news to some of you, some people tend to have a much stronger preference towards either praise songs or hymns. And, you know, it's kind of like the old farmer who went to the big city one day and he was there for the weekend and he went to worship and he came back and his wife asked him, well, how was it? And the farmer said, well, it was good. They did something different, however. They sang praise songs instead of hymns. Praise songs, his wife asked, what are those? Well, the farmer said, they're like hymns. They're okay. They're like hymns. They're just different. Well, what's the difference, his wife asked. And the farmer said, well, if I were to say, Martha, the cows are in the corn, that, that would be a hymn. But if I were to say, Martha, oh, Martha, 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 the cows, the big cows, the brown cows, the black cows, the white cows, the black and white cows are in the corn, are in the corn, are in the corn, are in the corn, the corn, corn, corn. <laughs> and if I were to sing that two or three times, well, that would be a praise song. <laughs> well... Well, the very next weekend, the farmer's nephew, a new young Christian from the city, came to this small country town to visit the farmer and his wife, and they took him to church and to worship. And when the young man got home, his mother said, well, how was it? And the young man said, well, it was good. They did something different, however. They sang hymns instead of praise songs. Hymns, his mother said, what are those? And the young man said, oh, they're okay. They're just different. And what's the difference, his mother asked. And the young man said, well, if I were to say to you, Martha, the cows are in the corn, well, that would be a praise song. But if I were to say to you, oh, Martha, dear Martha, hear thou my cry, inclinest thine ear to the words of my mouth, turn thou thy whole wondrous ear by and by to the righteous, inimitable, glorious truth. For the way of the animals, who can explain? There in their heads is no shadow of sense. Hearkenest they and God's son are his reign. 
unless from the mild tempting corn they are fenced. Yea, those cows in glad bovine rebellious delight have broke free their shackles, their worn pens eschewed. Then goaded by minions of darkness and night, they all my mild Chilliwack sweet corn have chewed. So look to the bright shining day by and by, when all foul corruptions of earth are reborn, where no vicious animals make my soul cry, and I no longer see those foul cows in my corn. (laughs) Then, if I were only to do verses 1, 3, and 4 and do a key change on the last verse, that would be a hymn. Well, I want to extend my congratulations today to all of the graduates who are here today and to their families, whether you're graduating from high school or college. It's the end of an era and a chapter in your life, but also in your family's life. And you won't realize how significant it is for your parents and your siblings, so I'm telling you, it's really significant. So think about how this change impacts not only you, but your parents and your siblings, and be sensitive to their feelings as well. Well, you all finished a series from the book of Daniel, a series called First Things, about principles that guide us in living well anywhere. So it turns out you're going to get a bonus. One more sermon on living well. So let me begin with a story. Uh, I'm a baseball fan, and one week from today, the Cape Cod Baseball League will be opening the 2022 season. So all throughout this week, there are going to be young men arriving on Cape Cod from all over the country to play in that league. Uh, I've served on the board of directors for the Brewster Whitecaps for many years, and starting back in 2004, my family and I have been a host family for players coming to play on the Cape. And every year, that first week, it'll be this week, the general manager gives a talk to the players about abiding by all the league rules and policies, including the league alcohol and drug policy. And back in 2008, that talk was given in Brewster on June 11th. A few days later, on June 15th, two players who were not yet of legal age had been drinking and One went outside and got in his pickup truck and somehow ended up striking the other player and seriously injuring him. And he was rushed first to Cape Cod Hospital and then taken immediately to Mass General Hospital in Boston. I received a phone call at 4.30 in the morning to let me know what had happened. And by 6.30 that morning, I was in the ER at Mass General Hospital in Boston with another member of our board of directors. Later that day, we went to Logan Airport to pick up the young man's frightened parents. And while I tried to reassure them in the car as we were driving to the hospital, they quickly told us that 20 years before, just two months before this son was born, their 12-year-old son was riding his bicycle to school when he was struck and killed by an automobile. So you can imagine how terribly traumatic it was for these parents to receive 20 years later a second phone call saying your son is in the hospital, he's been hit by a vehicle, the situation is critical. I spent several days with them at Mass General Hospital and thankfully with a terrific medical team at Mass General as the Feldots have been been blessed to see this week and Then in North Carolina, the prayers of hundreds of people, after a month, the young man recovered. And talking with someone about that incident, uh, someone came and said to me, well, live and learn. And I looked at him and I said, you know, I don't know if that's the best way to live. You know, many times after a painful or negative or less than successful experience, we use or we hear people use that phrase, oh well, live and learn. And all of us can probably fill in a story from our own life experience or from that of someone close to us that ended with someone saying, oh well, 
live and learn, closely related to it is its cousin, experience is the best teacher. Well, the wise men and women of ancient Israel would vehemently disagree with that statement. Experience alone is not the best teacher because there are some experiences that it's wise not to have. We're better off never experiencing them because sometimes things happen and we can't change it, we can't erase it, we can't make it go away. The families of those two ball players involved in that accident that summer would all tell you experience is not the best teacher. Living first and learning as we go sometimes is necessary, but sometimes it can be painful and even fatal. So the book of Proverbs tells us if you want to live well, don't live and learn, learn and live. Listen to Proverbs chapter 2, beginning at verse 1 through verse 11. My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly, guarding the paths of justice and preserving the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path, for wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Prudence will watch over you and understanding will guard you. This is God's word for us for today. The book of Proverbs seeks to shape your character so you don't make poor or disastrous choices in your daily living. The Spanish writer Cervantes defined a proverb as a short sentence founded upon long experience containing a truth. And the book of Proverbs reveals what was cherished in Israel, and near the top of that was the pursuit of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, insight into godly and successful living. Israel's wise teachers taught that from the time of our birth, each one of us is on a journey and we're embarking on a journey that either leads to a full and a contented life or to an unhappy existence and tragically even sometimes a premature departure. According to Proverbs, on the path of life, there are two distinct groups of people, the wise and the foolish, who are walking toward different goals, towards different destinies. The wise demonstrate their wisdom through righteous behavior, acts of justice, kindness, self-control, faithfulness, loyalty, temperance, the ability to control one's speech, temper, and passions. Those are the wise. The foolish, on the other hand, display their folly through wicked and evil actions, through violence, bloodshed, greed, adultery, uncontrolled speech, anger, and passions, laziness, untrustworthiness, disloyalty, and drunkenness. And Proverbs doesn't allow for any middle ground between wisdom and folly, yet it makes very careful distinctions among fools. Did you know there are eight different terms for fools in the book of Proverbs? Of course you didn't. Who knows that sort of thing? So I'm here to tell you, there's eight different terms. And the one term means a naive, untutored individual. And this type of person could still be influenced for good or evil. So there was still hope for them if they sought wisdom and instruction. 
the wise looked distastefully at the seven other types of fools. These are the one who is innately stupid. John Wayne in the movie The Sands of Iwo Jima, if any of you ever saw that movie, he played Sergeant John Stryker. And he said famously in that movie, life is tough, but it's tougher if you're stupid. The obstinate, the one who persists in folly, the crude, the brutal, depraved person, the irrational, and the foolish talker who values his or her opinion too much. These are all different types of fools who are described in the book of Proverbs. And in contrast to these foolish, these foolish behaviors is the wise path that's marked by wisdom goodness, justice, understanding. Since experience alone is not the best teacher, the problem in ancient times was how to enable younger people and older people alike to find and follow God's good path that leads to life. The problem today is even more challenging than it was then. Today there are more temptations, more pitfalls, more things to be wary of than there were in ancient Israel. For example, they were concerned about avoiding drunkenness. Today you have to worry about not just abusing alcohol, but a whole host of other drugs. And when it comes to drug use, experience is not the best teacher. It's great when someone who has been using drugs or alcohol or addicted, it's wonderful when they're able to get free of that addiction but you're better off not using in the first place. The wise teachers of ancient Israel were worried about adultery with a neighbor. Today, human trafficking and the internet have created concerns and situations they never could have imagined. Every generation differs from the one before in terms of values, technological advances, and power, but wisdom is timeless. And a principle of wisdom that would have guided an ancient patriarch to make a healthy and a holy decision will still help guide a teenager to make the best decision today. There are millions of young people graduating from high school and from college at this time of year, and they're going to go off to work or to join the service, or, and their parents are going to cope with the swirling emotions caused by sending a child off into the world hoping that their son or daughter has gained enough godly wisdom to make good decisions when it comes to the company they keep and the things they will do. Today, there's even a greater need for wisdom, for insight, for understanding on the part of younger and older people alike. As I've said, after a painful experience, sometimes we say, oh, well, live and learn. Wisdom, on the other hand, says learn learn and live. In the Bible, there are four books that are commonly referred to as the wisdom literature. That's Job, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. And the book of Proverbs focuses on the normal kinds of issues that we all face in our lives, things like being a good neighbor, how we handle money, watching your speech and your temper, and living a moral and an upright life, and other pitfalls that are to be avoided. And Proverbs was written to help you become more skillful in life, in every aspect of life, so that you can make good choices in every circumstance. And it's a wonderful guide that you can consult at any time. There was a shepherd who was herding his flock in a remote hillside pasture when suddenly a brand new expensive SUV came raising up a cloud of dust, and guy pulled up next to the shepherd and put down his window, and it was a young man in a high-priced suit and glasses, and he looks at the shepherd and says, hey, if I tell you how many sheep you have, can I have one? And the shepherd calmly looked at his peacefully grazing flock and said, sure, why not? And the guy whipped out an iPad, and he quickly got an ultra-high-resolution photo of the hillside, and in no time he turned to the shepherd and said, you have exactly 1,586 sheep. 
And the shepherd smiled and said, that's right, I, I guess you can take one of my sheep. And he watched the young man select one of the animals and start to put it in the back of his SUV. And then the shepherd said to the man, he said, hey, if I can tell you what your business is, can I have my sheep back? And the young man said, sure, why not? And the shepherd looked at him and said, you're a consultant. And the man said, that's right. How did you know? And the shepherd said, it wasn't that hard. You showed up here even though nobody called you. You want to get paid for an answer I already knew to a question I wasn't asking, and you know nothing about my business. <laughs> now give me back my dog. Reading the book of Proverbs is like having a really good consultant who knows a great deal about the business of life. And you're enriched when you read it and heed it. Proverbs chapter 2 portrays the value and importance of moving from a passive openness to wisdom to pursuing it diligently with energy and with focus. People often talk about having an open mind. But the purpose of having an open mind is to fill it with truth and substance and meaning. Notice in Proverbs chapter 2, there was this repetition of if and then, and this doesn't always appear in every translation. So let me just say it again really quickly. If you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice if you seek it like silver, search for it as for hidden treasure. How do people seek for silver and his hidden treasure? You ever watched Oak Island, all these other programs? What? How do people search for hidden treasure? They do it with single-minded energy and devotion and focus and a willingness to expend all their resources. Think Yukon Cornelius and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. If you do all of the above, Proverbs says, then you'll understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Then you'll understand righteousness, justice, and every good path. If you need wisdom about a situation you're facing today, the New Testament letter of James encourages you to ask if any of you, if any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly and it will be given to you. In 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 9, God tells the young and newly crowned King Solomon, he'll give him anything that he wants. Can you imagine being asked that question? And Solomon asked for a wise and understanding heart, and God was really pleased. And yet even Solomon ended up departing from the path of wisdom. It happened to him, it could happen to me, it could happen to you. Psalm 1 says, happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Do you hear the progression there? First, you listen to bad advice. Then you have a little experience on the path of sin, and the next thing you know, you're sitting in the seat of scoffers who don't love, trust, follow, or serve the Lord. In Luke 2, verse 52, we're told that even Jesus grew in wisdom. You know that verse? Even Jesus grew in wisdom. What about you and me? One of the goals of Scripture is to enable you to mature and grow into the full stature of Christ so that you may live fully, the motto of Cape Cod Church. And in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 28, Paul says his task is teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. How are you doing with that? How are you doing at maturing in Christ-likeness? How are you seeking and pursuing wisdom? How diligently are you seeking? How focused are you? There was a boy who brought his report card home one day and noticeably absent were the first three letters of the alphabet. And he shared it with his distraught father who was looking at it. And the little boy looked at his dad and said, what do you think, dad? Is it genes or environment? <laughs> Lyman Bryson said, the error of youth is to believe that intelligence is a substitute for experience. 
The error of age is to believe that experience is a substitute for intelligence. What can you do if you want to get serious about growing in wisdom? And I'll wrap this up really quickly. First, get and use a good study Bible. You know, someone said if every Christian in America took a Bible off the shelf of their house and opened and closed it at the same time, it'd be the biggest dust storm since the Dust Bowl back in the 1920s. <laughs> get and use a good study Bible. Become an active participant in a small group Bible study or class here at Cape Cod Church. Get involved in one if you aren't. Read a chapter in Proverbs every day. There's 31 chapters in Proverbs. There's 30 or 31 days in most months. So just whatever day of the month it is, what's today? The fifth. Yeah, if you know the right answer, just shout it right out. Don't be shy. It's the fifth, right? So just read Proverbs chapter five and read that. And then fourth, pick a verse and memorize it and meditate, it, meditate on that verse during the day. And don't tell me you can't memorize scripture. Don't tell me you can't memorize passages of scripture. Don't tell me you can't because you can. You have the words to hundreds of song in, in your head. Hundreds of them, right? To say nothing of commercials, which are like cockroaches in your brain. You just can't get rid of them. And if you don't think that's true, there are some of us here of a certain age, all I have to do is ask you, what's in a Big Mac? And you will say, Two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. You know who you are if you knew that too. And if you know that, if you can remember that, you can remember the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You can remember they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings like eagles. You can remember for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. If you can remember, can you hear me now? Where's the beef? You can remember, I am the bread of life, Jesus said. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Don't live and learn. Learn and live. And you know what? Even if there's something that you wish you could go back and change. You know what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse 28? He says, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Will you join me in prayer? And may this prayer be your prayer. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. You are good and upright and instruct sinners in the way. You lead the humble in what is right and teach the humble your wise way. I thank you that all your paths are steadfast love, faithfulness, and wisdom for those who read and heed your word. And thank you for sending Jesus to be our Lord and our Savior, the one who forgives our sins and walks with us every day on the path of life, teaching us wisdom if we just open our hearts and listen. In his name we pray, amen. Oh, a huge thank you to Pastor Doug for that message. And what a perfect message for today, because today we celebrate Graduation Sunday here at Cape Cod Church. So we're going to switch gears a little bit here and celebrate some of our students who have learned probably some lessons through experience through the years, and hopefully also some good lessons that they can now live with. Um, we are so excited for this. We have a bunch of students this morning that we're celebrating, and uh, here's the deal. Here's why we do this. Uh, at Cape Cod Church, we count it a privilege to be part of people's faith journey at every stage of life. 
But it is a unique privilege to be part of that for those who are discovering their own faith for the very first time. And with our students, we get to be a part of that. We get to create environments where they can encounter Jesus, where they can ask questions and explore their doubts, and where they can meet mentors and adults who care about them, who can help guide them through those ups and downs of life and embody Jesus in their lives. And it's a huge honor to be part of that. And this is a point we know, the end of high school, where we may not get to make that investment in the future. One of the beautiful things about this point is we hope that some of them do stay on Cape Cod and that some of them come back, but we also know that sometimes God sends them elsewhere, that God has their own journey for them, and that our season of investment in many ways is coming to a close for some of them. But if you are a part of Cape Cod Church, that means that you are a part of a family, and it means you always have a place to call home and come back to. And the other thing about families is that they love celebrating and bragging on one another. So this morning, we are going to brag on our students at Cape Cod Church. Can you help me do that a little bit this morning? Awesome. Well, first up, we have Samantha Maxwell coming to the stage. She is graduating from Mashpee High School, and she graduated high school a year early, which is quite an accomplishment, and also is already a year ahead in college. She says, I have achieved, yes, you can clap for that too. Yeah. That is worth celebrating. She says, I have achieved high honors all four years of high school and am a member of multiple honor societies. Her future plans include attending Cape Cod Community College to get her degree in nursing. And after that, she plans to go on to get her master's degree as a nurse practitioner to work in the trauma field. And she's also minoring in criminology. It's quite, quite a plan. We love that. The verse she chose today for her life verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives us strength. Can you give a round of applause for Samantha Maxwell? <laughs> Next up to the stage, we have Tyler Brown. Tyler is... <laughs> Tyler is graduating from Upper Cape Cod Technical Regional School. His accomplishments include receiving honor roll, top in English for his freshman year class, and received best stage display in 2019. That's awesome. And his future plans include to attend Boston Baptist College, which is very cool. His verse is Psalm 37:24. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hands. Can you give a round of applause to Tyler Brown? <laughs> Next up to the stage is Hunter Fleming. <laughs> Hunter is graduating from Falmouth High School. His accomplishments, he says, I am proud to have completed high school and look forward to my future education. He'll be playing lacrosse at West Nottingham Academy, which is incredible. And I'm going to add, Hunter is also three years running one of our Live, Live Fully Camps lacrosse coaches, which is an accomplishment. So, uh, we need to... His future plans, he's attending West Nottingham Academy for a postgraduate year, which we're so excited about. And for his verse, he chose Philippians 4.13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Can you give a round of applause for Hunter? <laughs> this time I'm going to ask you to hold your applause till the end so we don't get too tired out because we have a lot of people to celebrate. But coming to the stage is Camille Leet. She's graduating from Falmouth High School. Her accomplishments include Spanish Honor Society, Math Honor Society, Science Honor Society, and the World Language Seal of Biliteracy in Spanish. It's incredible. How do you have enough time to be in that many honor societies? I love it. And her future plans include attending Suffolk University with a major in biology on the pre-med track, which is incredible. Her verse she chose is Micah 7-8. It says, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. That is beautiful. <laughs> it's worth it. 
Congratulations, Camille. Uh, coming to the stage next is Cody Benjamin Feldot. He, he's graduating from Falmouth Academy. Something you may not know about Cody, he has three amazing older sisters. <laughs> and he is his parents' favorite son. Uh, he is among his many accomplishments. He is a three-sport athlete. He achieved all Cape All-Star honors in soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. He's the Cape and Island Soccer MVT, MVP, All-State Team for Soccer Lacrosse Team Captain. He's currently second in scoring in the state for lacrosse. He holds the school's all-time four-year high school record, and he also received from his school the Mariner Award for Sportsman of the Year. His future plans include attending Providence College to study business and finance. So he's joining Friar Town. That's their mascot, is the Friars. And the verse that he chose is Philippians 3, verses 13 through 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Congratulations, Cody. Next to the stage is Cheyenne Hendricks. You can give a round of applause for Cheyenne. She's graduating from Mashpee High School. Among her accomplishments, she is vice president of her class. She's the president of the Keystone Club at the Boys and Girls Club. She's a member of the varsity basketball team, and you may recognize Cheyenne because she is a worship team member at Cape Cod Church, which we love. And yesterday, I also found out that her given Native American name is Singing Bird, which how perfect is that? She is a singing bird. Future plans include attending Loyola, Maryland to study psychology. And the verse she chose is Romans 1, verse 20. It says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. That is beautiful. Congratulations, Cheyenne. <laughs> Next coming to the stage is Skyla Rimple. You can give a round of applause for Skyla. <laughs> she is graduating from Mashpee High School. Among her accomplishments, she is the class president at Mashpee High School. She is a member of the varsity soccer team, and she is captain of the varsity volleyball and basketball teams, and she is also a member of the National Honor Society. Her future plans include attending University of Pennsylvania to study political science and urban studies. We love that. You may be seeing Skyla in the future as your future president of the United States, as well as class president. And the verse she chose is Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Beautiful. Congratulations, Skyla. <laughs> Next coming to the stage is Jack Fredericks. Jack is graduating from... <laughs> Jack is graduating from Cape Cod Regional Technical High School, and among his accomplishments, he said, I survived volunteering in Kids Town and attending Kids Camp. <laughs> he also clearly developed a great sense of humor, which is another accomplishment. His future plans include attending Biola University to study computer science. Love that. And for his verse, he chose Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Beautiful. Congratulations, Jack. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Pedro Afonso. <laughs> he is graduating from Cape Cod Regional Technical High School as well. Among his accomplishments, he said he achieved high honor roll, which is an awesome accomplishment. And Pedro also has a gift for making friends and courage, because this year he came to snow camp with us for the first time as a senior and immediately fit in with the whole Loft family. We love that. His future plans include attending Biola University to study business analytics. And for his verse, he chose Luke 14, verses 25 through 27. It says, large crowds are traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. 
And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Beautiful choice. Congratulations, Pedro. We have one more group of people that we would like to honor this morning, and that is the parents of all of these graduates. So if you are a parent, would you please stand up so we can celebrate you as well? These people have loved these students, they have sacrificed for them, and in when necessary, they have dragged them across the finish line. So congratulations, parents, you can take a seat. Uh, this morning, we have a gift for all of our graduates. It's a book, Ordering Your Own Private World, which we hope will guide them through kind of these next college and career years. But this morning, we also just want to take an opportunity to pray for them. So our youth pastor, Alexa Franco, is going to take a moment to pray for them. And you'll forgive her if she tears up a bit, because for some of these students, she has known them since they were 11 years old. So with that, Alexa, will you come pray? Definitely emotional. <laughs> but I'm sure the parents share with me in that we're just so proud of you. And we want to pray for you, because we know at the end of the day, I'm so confident that your relationship with our Heavenly Father is a thing that's going to walk with you in the next chapter. We're proud of the individuals that you are today. Reading your accomplishments is just a little bit of your story, and knowing each of you is a privilege, so we just want to pray. Would you stand with me as we pray for these graduates and we send them off? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you just grateful for who you are. We know that you are God who made these students who have worked in their stories in intricate ways and we are just so grateful today to bear witness to the fact that you have reached young people here on Cape Cod for your cause and your mission with your story and your love and here at Cape Cod Church God we're so grateful that we get to walk with them through these seven years in youth ministry and before that in kids town and even some of them in the park as infants so today we stand here as a church and we just honor you for your work, for every story, every smile, every handshake that has made a difference in their lives. We thank you. And we thank you that we get to know them, that we get to see them. And today, as we release them into the world and we celebrate what comes next, God, I just pray that above all else, they would lean into you, Father. We know you're, they're gonna, that you're going to walk with them, and today we ask that they would walk with you, that when they fall, they fall into you. When they fall, they fall forward, and that they'd continue to walk. I pray that they'd continue to walk together as a group. I thank you for the friendships represented on this stage. I thank you for the families represented on this stage. Be with them, and what's next? And today, we just thank you for all of you done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.